Well, there was a bit of a delay in <laughs> posting the part two of this job because uh, uh, Darcy decided to keep the guitar and I've just got it back from him now. So first of all, there is the compensated nut. Now this is 10 to 46, a concert pitch. There's our compensated nut. Frets have been dressed. Uh, the whole thing's been regulated for uh, those strings, that scale length, that tuning. This is where the break was once upon a time. And that was a nasty break too. If you remember, we put five sixteenth inch thick mahogany splines in this one. Darcy, he said, well, I'm going to keep this one. So he, he decided to just go with black. He painted it black. Uh, he said he didn't want to get into kind of matching the shade and all that. Uh, like really, the work that we did on this guitar is worth more than the value of the actual guitar. But that's not the point. I wanted to do that sort of tutorial. And you can see in the video the steps that I take to make this happen. Uh, the other thing I was going to say is, it, you know, it's funny because there's been a delayed reaction on me uh, posting this second part. And in the meantime, I just got an email from uh, Steve Callahan in Victoria, Australia, who has a busy shop there. He's a busy tech there. And in part one of this video, I was shipping him the uh, uh, neck surgery kit. Him and also Harpeth Guitars out of Nashville, another very busy shop. Scott St. Denis is... Uh, Busy guy, guy in demand. So both of those guys have had their neck surgery jigs, put them right to use right away. And you can use the neck surgery jig without the GPS tech deck. And I've sold it, you know, to guys all over the place. The guitar shop in Paris, France, and um, the fella in Israel, and other guys have bought the neck surgery kit and then just retrofitted it for their own needs. For Scott St. Denis in Nashville, and for Steve Callahan of Victoria, Australia, both of those guys have their GPS units. You can see in part one of the video that the setup is pretty quick when you've got a GPS unit. You can just slide that onto the top platform and away you go. Welcome back everyone. We have another neck surgery here. This is not an expensive guitar. It's an Epiphone Les Paul and the job is <laughs> worth more than the value of the guitar. But I'm doing this for your benefit uh, for all the latest guys that ordered the neck surgery kit. What you're looking at here is the CNC router sled which accommodates the Bosch Colt router. Before you mount the router on the sled, this protruding threaded rod, 3 16th inch brass rod, will show you precisely what the trajectory of the cutter is long before you flick the switch on the router. For those of you who follow my channel you'll know that I have at least 14 or 15 videos on this job. I wanted to bring you in close on this particular guitar because the headstock itself has a little bit of a tilt. This threaded rod between the two aluminum walls I've adjusted it on a slight angle so that the face of the headstock is fully supported on that aluminum U-channel. Now the second purpose of these stringers, there's one on each end, with that quarter twenty rod you can adjust the sliding action of the router sled. So you end up with a smooth cut, no apparent looseness or tightness in the sliding action the rudder sled. So here we have another angle. All these walls will flex ever so slightly and the two stringers here and here will adjust that flex so that the rudder sled moves without any apparent looseness or tightness. Good and solid. This is the indexing pin. These windows that are cut in the elliptical walls of the jig enable you to do a visual check of the trajectory of the cutter before you flick the switch on the router. So I will mount the router, I will adjust it to this depth and we'll be ready to make the cut. So I remove the base plate. This fixture is CNC'd for accuracy. It only goes on one way. There's our indexing pin. I have an aluminum straight edge, but you just use a piece of wood that goes across the flat of the router sled and I've adjusted the cutter just slightly less than the indexing pin. We'll make that cut and then we'll double check.
This is one of those instances where I stepped up the cutter to 5 sixteenths from quarter inch. And the reason for that is this is a bad break. Let me explain why. I think what is often overlooked in this type of a break is the amount or lack of long grain versus end grain. So this break here, it's, it's basically kind of broke like this. A better break would be one that broke like this, where you have all of that long grain surface. But we don't have that luxury in this case, and that's why I've stepped up that cutter to 5 sixteenths from quarter inch. I will heat up the hide glue now and I'm going to glue in that one spline first. Again, I don't do this in every case, but I'm doing it in this case because this is a extremely delicate and fragile break. So I'll glue that in, let it set overnight, leave the whole thing in the jig. Tomorrow I'll come back, make my second cut. I've already roughed out the spline for that second cut, so it'll go pretty quick tomorrow. Well, I've got my digital thermometer kind of spin off of the whole COVID thing to check the uh, temperature on my glue. It's 135. I'm going to bring that up just a tad. I'd like to see about 145, 150. Yeah, we'll give that a couple of minutes. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I have at least, I think there's 12 or 14 videos on this procedure on various guitars that I've already produced. But I will point out a couple of things here. So these rubber tipped cinch pins basically hold the neck dead center in the jig. This clamp pulls the neck tight to the pivoting aluminum U-channel. You want to make sure that U-channel is in between the frets so that the wood of the fingerboard, not the fret, is resting on this pivoting U-channel. Same thing on this end. We have that pivoting U-channel and the rubber tipped cinch pins that hold the neck dead center. Now we made that cut. I've let this sit overnight. This is a really bad break. So I've stepped it up to 5 sixteenths. Made this cut last night. Just left the thing in the jig. Now I'm just rotating the router 180 and making our second cut. Uh, this I have also explained in other videos. I have a piece of walnut here. I mean, this could be 8th inch thick ball to birch plywood. It happens to be walnut. And so I use the aluminum wall of the neck surgery kit to trace this curvature. And this template will be altered. Every time I do the job, I will alter it slightly. I am able to use the exact same elliptical tracing for that second spline. So this is mahogany stock. I so started. I harvested that spline out of this piece of mahogany which was initially about three quarters of an inch thick. I got the two splines out of the one piece. So next thing we do, we're going to go over to the stationary disc sander and skim this down to the line. So the next step for the spline is I'm using that 24 foot spherical radius surface on the top of the disc sander conversion kit for your drill press and we're just going to skim this down until we get a beautiful press fit. So a word of caution here, when you're fitting that spline into the dado that you've cut, you want to make sure it goes in without any apparent looseness or tightness. And that is what we've got. Now we're going to mark this spline. We'll cut this on the bandsaw shy of that line that I just drew. You don't want to mark it on the outside, mark it on the inside.
most of you that are following my channel know that I'm really big on this foot switch. I have the bandsaw on a foot switch as well. Just skimming this flush to take out the chatter marks of the uh, bandsaw. I want a nice flat surface. Well, glue is heated up now. We are ready. Happy with that fit. Now we're going to take it out of the jig. We got that glue up to 148, which I'm happy with. So this is why I leave that spline flat on top. Good. Happy with that. We'll let that set and then we'll sand it out tomorrow and get it out to Darcy for finishing. You heard me mention earlier in the video about long grain versus short grain. With these two long elliptical splines you have six long grain surfaces. The floor is long grain, this side and this side are all 100% long grain contacts. In essence there are six long grain surfaces that start before the break and go beyond the break and that's what makes these so strong and that's why we ship them worldwide. These next two are going to uh, Harpeth Guitars in Nashville, Tennessee. Now Scott already has his GPS unit and Steve Callahan in um, Victoria, Australia he also has his GPS unit so those guys can just slide it right onto the top platform like you saw earlier. Now we have sold the neck surgery kit to people that don't have tech decks and we're fine with that but my Patreon subscribers and former students get first pick on the accessories and workstations as they become available. Just want to give you a heads up on that whole long grain versus short grain. I have seen videos where people have sort of plunge routed and then moved in a straight line and then lifted the cutter out. Well the problem with that is at the beginning of the cut and at the end of the cut you basically have short grain to short grain. So you've essentially weakened the neck by doing that. The way this is done, like I said, it's 100% long grain, six long grain surfaces. I've never had one of these break. This is a shipping carton that we ship these uh, neck surgery kits in. This is the one going to Steve Callahan in uh, Australia. To reduce the size of the shipping carton, these two pins are pulled off and installed in reverse, just to reduce the width of the shipping carton. There is a corresponding mail rail on the bottom of the neck surgery kit when you get it, and that allows you to slide that onto the top platform of the GPS unit. Okay, so this is something in B minor, just to kind of show the clean sounds. So we'll let that play.
it's really not a matter about the price of the guitar. Even a lower end Epiphone Les Paul like this one can be set up with a compensated nut and regulated so that it is perfectly in tune. Anywhere on the fingerboard. I apologize for the delay on part two, but uh, yeah, Darcy kind of fell in love with the guitar and just wanted to keep it. And now you got the whole picture on that uh, snapped head stock. Fully restored, compensated nut, set up for 10 to 46 strings, concert pitch, and it's a player. All those first position chords. So I have recorded a couple of parts with the loop station. First part is the second layer of the loop. I have uh, stop seventeen on this ME twenty five. Is bass, is is a bass, so it's. So I'm going to let those two play and then I'll kind of blow over top of that. Mm -hmm. 